This morning we're going to start in a, a series of, of, of sermons that are going to take us to the Christ, to the, up to about Christmas time, not too great to Christmas time. And I, I realized over the last little while that uh, in our church, in our congregation, a lot of you don't know the stories of the Old Testament, uh, about different characters that are in the Old Testament. So this week we're going to start a series of what I would call the Heroes of, of the Old Testament. And uh, we're going to begin with Noah. Anybody know anything about Noah? Do you know a little bit about Noah? Okay, yeah, Luis is. A few of you know a little bit about Noah. Noah, um, realize Noah was uh, an, inter he's an interesting character. The story that we look at this morning is found in, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. And the text that I, is basically one verse there. And uh, it's, it's, all it says there is, these are the family records of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. Blameless among his contemporaries. And then this, I love this line about him. Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. Noah was a righteous man. And Noah walked with God. This is the man that we're looking at this morning. A man that walked with God. So Noah was a righteous man. Well we begin our story. Basically if, you, if you're trying to get an understanding of where we are in history. It's about the 10th generation, some believe, of about 1,600 years after creation, 125 years after the death of Adam. And uh, in verse uh, six through, in chapter six, verse one through seven, we see that the world is not a really great place at this point. Creation has sort of gone well, at least with men. Creation has gone a little bit uh, south, so to speak. It's gone a little bit out of whack. And we read there, when man, when mankind began to multiply on the earth, the daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw that the daughters of man were beautiful, and they took uh, any um, they chose as, as wives for themselves. And the Lord said, My spirit will not remain with mankind forever, because they are corrupt. These are these their days will be 120 years. And then it goes on in verse 5, it says, When the Lord saw that man was wicked, the man's wickedness rather was widespread on the earth, and that every scheme in uh, every that every scheme his mind thought of was nothing but evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made man on earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Then the Lord said, I'll wipe off the face of the earth, man whom I created, together with animals, creatures that crawl, birds of the sky, for I regret that I made them. What do you think the world was like at that point? Sometimes I wonder, and sometimes I think about it, and I, when I read a passage of scripture like this, and I think and look around us today, and what's going on in the world around us, would God regret today what was created? Would God um, look at what's going on around and say, I regret that I created this? Uh, creation. Well, we're going to see that uh, that God was pretty serious about what he, what he said here. In fact, verse, when he says in verse 7, I'll wipe off the face of the earth man and whom I created together with the animals, creatures, and so forth. And he, he was really upset. But God saw that there was one good man left. In verse 8, it says, Noah, however, found favor in the eyes of God. The Lord. Who is Noah? Well, back in chapter five, verse twenty-nine, we get we read that uh, of his birth, where he, where he comes from, and uh, Lamel, uh, Lamech, Lamech was his father, who was one hundred eighty-two years old when he when he had uh, Noah. And in verse twenty-nine, it says, and he named him Noah, saying, "This one will bring us relief from the agonizing labor." Of our hands, caused by the ground of the Lord, the Lord has cursed. So Noah, his father knew that this this young man, this man, this boy that was uh, born to him was a special, was going to be a special boy. His name reflects that in the sense that he's this. His name has this meaning in verse twenty nine. It's a long verse of that a long name meaning. You know, lots of times you pick names like um, like Tamar has her name has a name. I know my name has a, has a meaning, rather, uh, and uh, so forth, Alexander, we, 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 when we pick names, Alexander's the only one we really tried to pick that wasn't connected to anything. I guess none of our kids are, are there, no, we didn't pick a based on their meaning. 
But um, as we look at this, he, Noah became a father at a very young age. In verse 32 of chapter 5, it says, Noah was, a, was 500 years old, and he fathered Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. So, uh, you know, you guys, are, uh, this, in the next, in the near future, uh, Calvin, you're, you know, you're, on a young, you're a young guy compared to Noah <laughs> when you're having your first child. He, Noah's 500 years old. Calvin, you're what, 20-something, right? So, um, you've got a little ways to go before you start having the rest of your children. But, uh, you know, 500-ish years old, and that's, that's who this Noah was. So he had three sons. And it was, it was said that Noah, it, it, it said that Noah in our text that was a, really a, a, quite a man, wasn't he? A man of faith. He was really a hero of all mankind, for without his faithfulness, God, would, to God, we wouldn't exist. Verse 9 it, it really tells us quite, quite a story of who he is, how he was a man that walked with God. He was a righteous man. What does the word righteous mean? Well, it was morally upright, without guilt or sin, is what the answer.com would tell us. So Noah was a man that, that was without sin, a man that, that was good before God, that was morally upright. He also was a man that, that was close to God. It sounds like to me, as he walked with God, he was similar to that of Adam, who walked with God in the, in the garden when, when he first was created. So this is who Noah is. This is the character, this is the type of person that we're talking about this morning. This is the type of person that I believe um, is, is the whole reason that we haven't had any hope uh, for, for existence, obviously, because if without Noah, the world would be destroyed. Then we go on in verse, uh, chapter 6, verse 11 through 22, and we see how the life of this righteous man helped uh, save mankind. It says, now the earth was corrupt. In God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. God saw how corrupt the earth was, for all flesh had corrupted its way on the earth. Then God said to Noah, I have decided to put an end to all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Therefore, I'm going to destroy them along with the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to make it. The ark will be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 75 feet high, or probably 45 feet high. You are to make, make a roof, finishing it uh, the size of the ark to within 18 inches of the roof. You are to put a door in the side of the ark and make it lower, uh, make it with, with the lower, middle, and upper decks. So it's quite the boat that he's created, isn't it? For, he's, he's supposed to build this thing set 450 feet long. Understand that I'm bringing a day of deluge of flood water on the, on the earth, destroying all flesh under heaven and breathe, blood, breathe and the breath of life in it. Everything on the earth will die, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter into the enter the ark with your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives. And you are also to bring into the ark two of every living thing of all flesh, male and female, Keep them alive with you. Two of, of everything from the birds according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and from every animal that crawls on the, on the, on the ground according uh, to its kind will come to you so that you can keep uh, them alive. Take with, the, take with you every kind of food that is eaten. Gather its food for, for you and for them. And Noah did this. And he did everything God had commanded him. Now, that may not sound like a big deal, but you think about it. Build me a giant boat in the middle of dry ground away from the water. Not just any boat, but this boat that is massive. And so he come, God comes to this righteous man, this faithful man, this morally upright man, this man that walks with God and says, I want you to build, do something for me that has never been done ever, ever any place in the earth. I want you to do something. I want you to build this, this thing that is, that is so massive that it's going to have three decks. It's going to have uh, be 75 feet wide, 45 feet high, 450 feet long. And I don't know, if, if you've ever sailed on any kind of ship of any kind, this is quite a massive undertaking. And build it out of, out of wood, not gopher wood. I don't know what gopher wood is. Some believe it might have been like a, like a, a cypress type tree or, or, you know, or something like that or, or a cedar of some kind or, or whatever. But he's to build this, this gopher wood boat and uh, get prepared.
prepared for this amazing thing that's going to happen that, he, that, that God is going to have. Now he's going to take into, into your, immediately all your immediate family and two of every kind of animal. Now, if that to me just, he, there's no, Noah doesn't go, what are you talking about? That's never been done before. Noah doesn't say, well, that's impossible. No one can do that possibly. No, no one doesn't say, how am I supposed to get all these animals here? He doesn't ask any logistical questions. He doesn't say, how are we going to make the trip? What's this trip, like, what exactly is going to happen? What, he doesn't ask for any detail. All of Noah does is say, basically, we find that Noah just goes, okay. Well, do, let's get it done. Now, if you were young enough, or old enough, I should say, if you've ever heard Bill Cosby's account of this, and, and he talks about... Uh, about how God comes to Noah and Noah goes, you know, asks all these questions of God and says, are you serious? That's not the really way it happens. Basically, God comes to this righteous man, this man that walks with him, and he says to him, build me this ark, build me this huge boat, this huge ship. And Noah says, yes. And then he says, I'm going to, and because, you're going to do it because I'm going to destroy everything else that's in the world. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, we read this about Noah. It says, By faith Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen, and motivated by godly fear, built an ark, delivered his, to deliver his family. By faith he, commit, he condemned the world, and the end became the, an heir of righteousness that comes by faith. You realize you when know, it says here something that had not yet been seen. You realize that it never rained on the earth yet. You know, we see rain. I remember when we were in Oklahoma, we, when we first moved down to Oklahoma to school, they had these big ditches. They're about four or five, maybe six feet deep, even at times. And you go, well, what are these things for? And then the first rainfall that we saw there, it rained so much and so fast that these six-foot ditches filled up within, within 10, 15 minutes of, uh, of the rainfall coming down. I'd never seen rain like that in my life. It was an amazing kind of thing to, to experience. But Noah was told to build this ark because God is going to destroy this, uh, the world with this flood. And God had never sent any rain upon the earth. Now, I, you ask, how did, how did things get, uh, get watered? How did that, how that happen? Well, as I understand it, it was dew and, and the dew because of the dew in the morning, the, the plants were, that's how the plants receive their water. But up to this point, there had been no rain. So Noah, by faith, said, I'm going to pay God. God asked me to go build this ark in the middle of, the, of, the, of this dry area of, this, of the land or wherever we live. And he's going to send this, this flood that I've never, you know, I've never seen before, I've never heard of before. But he said, I'll do it because I'm faith, because God's called me to do it. Here is a man that had such faith that he would follow God and do as God directed me without even the simplest question. In Genesis chapter seven and verse, and chapter seven and, and chapter eight of the same of the book of, uh, that we're looking at this morning, it, we, we see how the time comes and, and he's built the ark. Now he's not a really young man at this point. Noah, by the time he's finished, is six hundred years old. So he starts. Remember. He's, he has his, his sons at 500 years old, and so at some point with between 500 and 600 years old, God comes to him and says, I want you to build an ark, and, with your, and obviously he had to work the help of his sons. So, you know, I, I don't know about you, but, but when I, I had a big task like that, I don't know what 500 and some years old, if I'd be really to start working on it. I don't know if I'm at, at, at almost, I'll be 45 in two weeks, in under two weeks, right? And uh, I don't know, if God came to me and said, Dennis, I want you to go build an ark. 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high, and I want you to build three decks, and I want you to build little rooms in, that, in, in there, I want you to do all these different things. I don't know, at 45, I'd be going, God, I don't know if you got the right guy. I'm a little old for this kind of work. I don't have a crew to work with. You know, if I said to my three kids, we're going to build this thing and I'm here to help, they'd say, Dad, you're crazy. 
think about this, this whole, this whole, wrap your mind around this whole concept. But in this time, the, the time comes, Noah gets this thing built. I don't know how long it exactly takes him, so it has, he has a hundred years of time span that we have between chapter, chapter 5 and chapter 7 starting. And at, at 600 years old, God says, okay, Noah, time is right, you've got the boat built, I got, you've got, now the animals are starting to come, and I want you to come with me and, and take your family and their wives and your wife and enter into the ark. Okay, God, let's do it. And at that point, we, we see that he also is told that in an extra detail that hadn't come before, and that is down in, in chapter 7, he also gets told to bring in, bring in some of the other animals, the clean animals that he can use for eating and sacrifice. So we got to bring in a few extra animals also along with him. And so we get into that point, and then all of a sudden we come to the point in, in chapter 7 where, we, where the, the water comes and begins to, the heavens begin to open up, and the ground begins to bring forth water. Now, some people would say, how does 40 days of, of rain and 40 nights of rain come to, to be able to flood the entire earth? Well, I don't know. But it says in Scripture here that the water comes forth from, the, from underneath the ground as well as from the heavens. And God takes it and it basically covers the entire world and covers the highest mountain. And in fact, it gives a detail at one point in this section of Scripture, and I can't recall, I don't recall exactly where it is here, sorry. But it says that the, like 20 feet above the highest mountain peak is, is covered with water. Now, the water time, the, this, we, we often hear of 40 days and 40 nights, and that's what we hear of when we talk about this story. But actually, when it comes down to it, when you, when you read through chapter 7 and 8, you get the impression that it's not just 40 days and 40 nights that they're on the water, and all of a sudden the ground is dry, and they get out of the ark. It's actually closer to a year that they're on the, on the ocean. Now, if you've ever sailed at any point in your life uh, on the water, and on the on the ocean, or on a lake, or anything, if you're on the on the at sea for any length of time, and Alexander can verify this with me, that if you want been at sea for about a week and you get off the, off the ship, the ground moves still for for a few days. Now, can you imagine being on this on the water for 100 over almost 365 days? When you, if you read through the passage of scripture. You'll find that it's been on, they've been on there for almost that long. But they trusted God. God has taken care of them. God has commanded them to build this ark. God has, and he said, yes, Lord, I'm going to follow you no matter what you, what you command me. Because I'm walking with you. I'm a righteous man. I'm morally upright. I believe you. I trust you. And so what he does, he does, he does everything that God tells him. God closes up the ark. They're at sea for 100 or 300 some days of, at, at, uh, on the water. And then finally God says, he comes to Noah again, and he says, now Noah, it's time to, to get ready to get off. The world is, is, is made clean again, and Noah, the, here's, the, here's God command to leave the ark, and without question, he does. Chapter 8, verses 15 and through 19 is where we get to this point of scripture. In verse 15 it says, then God spoke to Noah, come out of the ark, you and your wife, your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring with you out. Bring out of every. Bring out everything. Every living thing of of all flesh that is with you. Birds, livestock, creatures that crawl on the ground, and they will spread over the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah, along with his sons and his wives, and his wife and, and his sons' wives, came out. All the wildlife, all the life, livestock, every bird, every creature that crawls on the earth, out of the ark. Um, by their groups. So that means that every little tarantula, every little spider, other spider, every snake, every other little creepy crawly that we know most of us don't like, except for our my weird son who has a tarantula at home. But uh, every other, all these things that, that came out of the ark that were with them, all the little creepy crawlies, all the livestock, all the birds, all the all, all the other animals that were in there with them, and they went out into the world again. Because God had commanded. Now remember, they've been in this ark for near a year. It rocked and it swayed up and down, side to side, and finally it settled. It had been their home for, 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 a, for a very long time. It was comfortable. All their needs were being met there. They had no idea that they would, they, what they would find when they finally stepped out on the ark. Because remember, they've been, the whole earth has been covered with water. Maybe the ground would be 
barren, maybe it would be cold and wet. It would be a strange thing to encounter, don't you think? But as this man Noah knew, if God asked him to do it, that was all that he needed to know. You see, when you walk with God, when you follow God closely, if God commands you to do it, no matter if it's build an ark, or no matter if it's step out onto a ground that you don't know anything about, don't you know what you don't know what you're going to encounter? If God has commanded you to do it, you do it. If God says to you, I have something for you to do, you don't say, Well, I need some more details. In Genesis chapter 28, verses 20 through 22, <coughs> we see how Noah continues to respond. He says, Then Noah built an ark, an altar rather, to the Lord. He took some of every kind of clean animal and every kind of clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the, on the altar. Then the Lord smelled the aroma, the pleasing aroma, and he said to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of man, even though man's inclination is evil from, from his youth. And I will never on I, and I will never strike down every living thing that as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and, and day and night will not cease. And then down in verse 17 of chapter 9, we read this. It says, God said to Noah, This is the sign of, of the covenant that I have confirmed between me 